Morning. Happy Thursday. My name is Bobby E. from Sigaboos, BC. Very happy to with you be. Haven't said that one in a long time. Good to be here with you on a Thursday morning in Mark chapter 7. When I look at that opening video and I see the beauty of God's creation, the massive scope of just our solar system, let alone the galaxies, it makes me think of the verse. I lift my eyes up to even those huge mountains and ask, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, maker, maker of heaven and earth. He's so big. He's so huge. He's so loving. He's so powerful. Nothing surprises him. Today, the world is shaken by the invasion of Ukraine. The brashness of Vladimir Putin and the ego of the man and his plot to invade a sovereign nation and it's uh, disturbing but God isn't surprised and uh, he is faithful and he knows what he's doing you have to ask yourself today's talk is about faith you have to ask yourself do I have faith that God is in control because uh, that is the big question. Do you really believe that Jesus has a plan in all of the chaos in the world? And this is where our hope comes from. It comes from either that or our lack of hope comes from the fact that we have despair, that no one's in charge, that this is just a chaotic jungle. So that's what this is about today. It's about faith. That's why you're here. That's why I'm here. We need to fuel our faith. We need to be bold about it. We need to come to the Father, fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding. No reason to leave. We've got him. Let's pray. I thank you, Father, that you love us, that you are with us now. And I pray that your word would reorder our thinking and make it new. You'd renew our minds. You would recharge our, our soul. You would breathe your breath of life into our lungs. That we would have what we need from you this day to do our jobs, to love our families, to love our friends, to work with our coworkers in a way that represents you well, to work for our bosses the way that you want us to, to, to be uh, hum humble and faithful, full of faith. I pray you dispel the despair and uh, give governments wisdom. We know you will move men's hearts in the direction that you want history to go. We pray for the people of Ukraine. We can imagine how it would feel to be trying to get out of your own country to safety. And not easy, Father. This is a um, a, a hard day in history and we just pray Lord for perseverance and faith in you keep us steady help us to be good at loving people and we pray Father that uh, you protect the innocent now and while we examine your word would you speak to our hearts Jesus we pray amen History has a, um, a way of showing us that there are certain people in the world that have always considered themselves better than other people. <clears throat> in the case of uh, the Pharisees, the uh, opponents of Jesus, interesting to me, um, in the life of Jesus and in the early church in the book of Acts, you will see that the only people that gave Jesus and the apostles problems were the religious people, not the Roman government. Yeah, the Roman government was the ruler of the land. But not till later on in the life of the church did the Romans give the Christians problems. It was the Pharisees, the religious, zealot-type, controlling, perfectionistic, I'm better than you, my race is better than your race, people, the Pharisees, they had this mentality about them that put everybody in their place. And they couldn't stand it that Jesus was gaining followers. And um, they definitely couldn't stand anybody that wasn't a Jew. They were 
dogs, and we're not talking about um, dogs today in our culture are are so well off. I mean, there's a dog food aisle, there's dog treats, there's dog sweaters. They carry dogs around in carriages. This term that you're gonna hear um, that the Jews called Gentiles was our equivalent of the word bitch. It was not a term of endearment. It was not a light thing to call a Gentile a dog. It had that connotation that they were scum of the earth. So here you've got Jesus. Yesterday we talked about how Jesus said that it isn't food that makes someone sick. So essentially what he was saying is you could eat bacon and it, you don't become unclean by that. And he was talking to Jews that would never eat pork. Jesus was saying, it's what comes out of your heart that's the problem. Not what goes into a person, but what comes out of a person, showing what's in the person. And that is a sinful heart full of pride, dissension, lust, envy, strife, materialism. Um, the, the heart is the problem, right? So what Jesus is saying yesterday is, it's the heart that is the issue. So clean your heart, clean the inside of the cup. Then the outside of the cup will get clean, where the Pharisees were only worried about ceremonial washing of their hands, like it's external, but they weren't worried about washing their hearts clean with humility, coming to, to God for forgiveness and really meaning it. It's what Isaiah said when he said, there's a bunch of religious people that come to me, and it's just a farce, it's just a joke. They don't mean their worship. They just come once a week, and they do it, and they check a box. It's a religious box. But... That is the context of moving into what happened in, in Mark 7, 24. So Jesus left Galilee. And he goes 50 miles by foot to the northern, northern region of Tyre and Sidon. This is a Gentile area. So Jesus is showing by his footwork where he's walking, his direction, that he was going to the Gentile people with the message and he was defying pharisaical law once again by where he was going what he was doing he was leaving jewish territory to bring his ministry to gentiles okay he didn't want anyone to know which house he was staying in but he couldn't keep a secret because everybody knew who he was his fame had spread throughout the whole region wait a minute that's jesus and crowds would follow him Right away, a Gentile woman who had heard about him came and fell at his feet. Her little girl was possessed by an evil spirit, and she begged him to cast the demon from her daughter. Since she was a Gentile born in Syria and Phoenicia, Jesus told her, First, I should feed the children from my own family, the Jews. It isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. What's, what's Jesus doing? Why is he saying that? That sounds like he's a Pharisee. But, let, just stay with me here. That's true, Lord, she said. But even the dogs under the table are allowed to eat scraps from the children's plates. Good answer, he said. Now go home, for the demon has left your daughter. And when she arrived home, she found her little girl lying quietly in bed, and the demon was gone. What's going on here? Why did Jesus seem to reaffirm that she was a gentile dog well first of all one commentator said he didn't use the word dogs he used the word little dogs like a puppy so he wasn't um echoing all the awful language of calling that woman that awful b-word name he had traveled 50 miles by foot you know how long that takes by foot to the north to the gentiles on their cities of Tyre and Sidon on purpose. This was unusual in his ministry because his focus was normally on the lost sheep of Israel. But what was happening here? It doesn't matter what Jesus said when he echoed that whole racial awfulness that was going on, but was what he did to prove that's not the case with God. It shows that Jesus did not obey the Jewish traditions. Here's a faithful Jew um, who went to the Gentile region to show his love and power and bring the good news of his gospel to them. Um, so 
Jesus is saying, so why am I here to the lady? Shouldn't I be just down there in Jerusalem, in Galilee, with my people? She's like, no, 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 you're here. You walked way out of the way to come and help us. So I may be a Gentile dog, but I know you're here to help. Yesterday we talked about the fact that uh, Jesus said foods were all clean. And here he was showing that all people are accepted by him and can be made clean too. Jesus on purpose is saying, I'm all about the world, not just a certain race of people. So one commentator, Barclay, says, can it be here we see Jesus wiping out the difference between clean and unclean people? He is shattering walls, and he always does that. Just as a Jew would never soil his lips with forbidden food, so a Jew would never soil his life by contact with an unclean Gentile. And Jesus does here what he did with the woman at the well in John 4, who is from that um, Sychar, that town of Samaria, where the whole town got saved. He approached her, a Gentile woman in public. And here he heals the daughter of a Gentile woman. Jesus was showing us that he can't be hidden from the world, that the world, he's available to the whole world. Jesus is available to every person. It doesn't matter who they are. And here's the key. She came and she fell at his feet. She kept asking him to cast, she kept asking him to heal her daughter, to cast a demon from her daughter. This woman came to intercede for her daughter. So Jesus seemed at first to discourage the woman, but what he was doing was he was testing her faith. He was saying, um, why am I here? Why, should, why am I not, shouldn't I just be with my people? She's like, no, no, you're here. See, she didn't cave in to what other people thought about her. She fell in humility at the feet of Jesus. And the Bible tells us this. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and he rewards those who diligently seek him. This was an example of overcoming, persevering, humble, bold faith that this woman was having. Was Jesus just another Jewish teacher who was going to dismiss me and ignore me like all the other religious people have done my whole life? Is Jesus going to treat me like other people have treated me like a dog my whole life? Or do I believe, like this woman at the well, do I believe that he is the Messiah? And this woman believed he was the Messiah. And so um, maybe in your life, people have treated you second class. Maybe people treated you like a dog. I'm going to tell you the story of a girl in my youth group 30 years ago named, I'll change her name, to Linda. That's not her name. But her mom and her dad treated this beautiful 13-year-old girl like a dog. They emotionally abused her. They slapped her. Treated her like scum. Would put her down. Just She, she couldn't get any good backing from home at all. She was treated like a dog. She came to youth group. She came to church. She found the love of God and Christian friends and in, in our home. And she just, she felt like she was part of the family. She came to Jesus and she came in faith and it overcame her past. And she got out of that town. She went on to a career, married a Christian man. She is an overcomer by faith. Doesn't matter what people have done to me. And the response to the offer of Jesus, his presence in our lives, just the fact that Jesus walk 50 miles to those cities to help people. Jesus crossed 50 million miles from his throne in heaven to us. And um, But think about it. Her, her response was everything. The woman's response, she responded with great faith. She accepted her low place, but not debating the Gentile reference. But think about it. Why were so many Jews not coming to Jesus for help? Because they wouldn't do what this woman did and humble herself before Jesus and say, help me. Why were so many Gentiles coming to Jesus? Because they were willing to humble themselves and say, help me. So there's a difference here. 
There's humility or the lack thereof. And in her case, she had buckets of humility. The only way to get Jesus' help is to admit we don't deserve his help. I don't deserve his help. But to come to him and ask for it anyway. You see, God doesn't force his help on anyone, right? He waits to be wanted. This woman wanted help. And Jesus saw her humility and her need. And he met her need. We need to see the power of coming to God as we are and letting him make true his promises to those who are weak and unclean. And I'm one of those people. If the woman had responded and got all self-righteous, why are you calling me a dog? She would have had an attitude where it's like, you Jews are scum, right? And that would not have helped her at all. But her humble, faith-filled submission to Jesus for help is the ticket to help. And that's what we have to realize too about ourselves, right? Nothing appealed more to our blessed Lord than the faith coupled with humility, one commentator, Ironside, said. And another commentator said this, He praised the prayer of the woman and it showed it had nine notable features. One, it was a short prayer. I need help. My daughter needs help. Two, humble. Three, full of faith. Four, fervent. Meaningful. Five, modest. Six, respectful. Seven, rational. Eight, relying on the mercy of God. And nine, she persevered in faith. Doesn't matter what anyone thinks of me. Doesn't matter what the Jews have said to me my whole life. I'm coming to the grace-filled King of Heaven. That is the ticket to being a hope-filled, healed person. The key to knowing you're loved and accepted by God. Doesn't matter what anybody has treated me like in the past. Doesn't matter what anybody's saying about me now. I know He loves me. Jesus traveled 50 miles on foot to help her. He traveled 50 billion miles to help us as a race, no matter who we are. Doesn't matter who ignored you. Doesn't matter who got in your way or who never helped you your whole life. We have to focus on him. Look at Jesus. He is all we need. All the help we need. All the hope we need. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame's done all it's stealing. And you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way Rises up from an empty grave Ain't no sinner that he can't save Let me tell you about my Jesus His love is strong and his grace is free And the good news is I know that he Can do for you what he's done for me Let me tell you about my Jesus And let my Jesus change your life tears from broken dreams and wasted years until the past to disappear oh let me tell you about my jesus and all the wrong turns that you would going on to if you could who can work it all for your own good let me tell you about my jesus cross to Calvary pay the price for all my guilty who would care that much about me let me tell you about my Jesus oh 
He makes a way where there ain't no way Rises up from an empty grave Ain't no sinner that he can't save Let me tell you about my Jesus His love is strong and his grace is free And the good news is I know that he Can do for you what he's done for me Let me tell you about my Jesus Wilson and her great song, My Jesus. Just remember that he is available to you, to me, to the whole world. So let's bring him to the whole world and uh, show people that great love that he's got for them too. Let me pray. I uh, ask you to give us a hope-filled existence that you can change the world. You can help anybody. And I pray, Lord, we wouldn't let anybody in their opinion of us get in our way of connecting to you, Lord. So give us strength and hope, we pray. And help us to bring that hope to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a good Thursday. I shared the 28-day challenge on my wall with y'all. See you soon. Bye.